so good tonight and so worthy to be praised. Amen. And desires. That's what he wants. Amen. You know what God wants more than anything out of his people? His praise. Amen. He wants us to praise him on the harp. Praise him. Amen. On the minstrels. Praise him. Amen. On the timbrel. Praise him in song. Amen. And in music. Amen. I can't understand my son don't read the book of Psalms and find that out. But praise God. We'll not go there. But praise the Lord. That's what he wants tonight. Amen. He wants us to praise him. Amen. Upon the stringed instruments. Amen. And he said to make melody in your heart. Amen. Under the Lord tonight. Amen. That's what he wants. He wants somebody. Amen. That's going to praise him. Somebody that's going, amen, to do all that they can, amen, to give God glory and say, Lord, if you never bless me, Lord, I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. I thank you, God, amen, that at the cross of Calvary, that's the only thing that mattered, amen, is that you sent your son to die, amen, to save my soul and everything else, Amen. It'll all come out in the wash. Amen. Because guess what? If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And tonight, the Bible said in the book of Romans, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. And through my him tonight, amen, amen, we have our well-being, Paul said in the book of Romans. But see, tonight, amen, and I want you to know tonight that God wants, amen, his praise. Amen. That's what he delights in. Amen. Not in burnt offerings. Amen. Not in, amen, the sacrifice of fools, but he wants, amen, praise. He inhabits our praise. Some people say that all the time and don't even know what that very meaning is. Inhabit means he dwells in. He's in the presence of. He lives in. Amen. He resides in. Amen. He inhabits our praise. So when we begin to praise him, he begins to come and dwell among, amen, us in our praise. Amen. But see tonight, amen, he said to enter in his courts with thanksgiving and through his gates with praise. Some people, they want to get into the holy place with God. But I'll tell you, if you ain't got praise on your lips, amen, if you ain't got a heart, amen, of worship for God, you can't enter in to that holy place. Amen. But tonight, amen, it's somebody, amen, that'll let the curves of this world go and just say, Lord, I love you. Woo! Hallelujah. How big good good tonight. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. If you've got your Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms tonight. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. The psalmist David, Psalm 127 tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. This psalm, amen, tonight is a very short psalm, just five verses, amen. But it was written by David's son, Solomon, amen. And, and if anybody reads the writings of Solomon, and if you read Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, amen, and you, you, you study Solomon, you'll find that Solomon, amen, he kind of would bounce back and forth, Amen. He would say one thing and another thing and another thing. And a lot of times it didn't even go together. Amen. But the thing was, he was trying to get his point across on certain topics. Amen. So tonight, we just want to read one verse. Amen tonight. Amen. Psalms. Amen. 127. Amen. The Bible said in verse 2, It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrow. For he giveth his beloved sleep. 
Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you tonight and I praise you, God. I thank you, God. It's God for the visitation tonight. I thank you, God. It's God that you moved in the midst of your people. God, and I thank you for the work that you're doing. And I praise you, Lord, tonight. It's God for all that you're going to do in the future. And I thank you for all that you've already done and what you've done in our past. And God, I pray, God, tonight. Just God, help us, O oh Lord. Lord, to trust you and to know, God, that everything is in your control and that if we serve you, we have no worries. Oh, God, I praise you tonight and I bless you tonight. Oh, God, I love you tonight. Help me, Lord. Lord, to preach your gospel. God, to do your work and to do your will in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen, the church said. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you tonight. Amen. But for me, amen, I would amen, rather have a church that knows how to get in the presence of God. A church, amen, that knows, amen, that the move of the Spirit is better than anything by the cold. Amen. When the Spirit moves, can I tell you something tonight? It brings healing. When the Spirit moves, it brings peace. Amen. When the Spirit it moves. Amen. It brings comfort. Hey, it brings joy. It brings happiness. Amen. It restores and refills the soul. I'm so thankful but not to have a house that I can come to. Amen. To be able to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful tonight. Amen. But I'm also thankful tonight. Amen. For the Word of God. Amen. Because tonight, Amen. The shout is wonderful. It refreshes, restores, and renews, and keeps us on fire to go forward. Amen. But here tonight, amen, can I tell you something? It's kind of like putting fire when there's no wood. Come on now. The Word of God is the wood. Amen. And the Spirit of God is the fire that keeps it burning. Come on now. And see tonight where there is no fire. Amen. And, and there is no fire. Doesn't matter how much wood you've got. Come on now. Somebody get with me on this for just a minute. Amen. And it doesn't matter how much fire you've got if you've got no wood. Come on now. Amen. Have you ever took poured gasoline on ashes and lit it? Whew. It'll blow up and flames will shoot and it'll last for just a few minutes and it'll be gone. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I feel that's like some of us tonight. Amen. Hey, uh, amen. We've got a little fire. Amen. When we come to church. Amen. We'll get in. Amen. The Holy Ghost will move to be like gasoline. Amen. But when we leave, there's nothing there to keep it burning. Oh, hallelujah tonight. Amen. But then I feel that there are others. Amen. That have chalk full of wood. Amen. But guess what? They won't get among the fire to keep the wood burning. Have you ever seen, amen, somebody that take a little killing, amen, a little wood, and just light a lighter to it and get a little piece of it burning? Hey, that little piece might burn for a little while, but it'll go out. Come on now. But see, amen, when you get a fire going all the way across it, when you get a full fire burning, amen, guess what? Amen, that wood that you put in there, that wood that you work for, amen, it'll keep the fire burning. Amen. Honey, that wood's the word of God, and the fire is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that that'll keep us. You can't have one without the other. Amen. I've heard some churches, don't get me wrong, Amen. I've seen times when there ain't no preaching needed. It's very rare. Come on now. And I've seen sometimes when there's no shouting needed. Come on now. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. It's important to keep a balance. Amen. Because without the right balance, the fire go out. Come on. You don't keep enough wood, the fire go out. Amen. Come on. You keep too much wood. You ever seen a, a stove with too much wood? It can't get no air, no matter how much fire you put to it. Come on now. That's like some people. Amen. Some people, they, they cram themselves full, amen, of stuff, uh, amen, that they think it's going to help them, amen. And really, uh, amen, they're sitting there dead cold. Come on now, because they don't want to get into the fire. 
But see, tonight we need the Holy Ghost. We need a perfect mixture. Come on now. Hey, that, you know that car you drive? That car that you drive without the right mixture of gasoline and the right mixture of oxygen and fire? Whoa! You ain't got enough of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Come on now. That, that's what that carburetor does. That carburetor adjusts the exact amount of oxygen, amen, of air, and the exact amount of fuel, amen, to get in there to that compression chamber, amen, where the spark plug is, where the fire's at, amen, that way that you can get down the road. Woo! Praise the Lord. So we need a proper balance tonight. You see, I'm afraid tonight, amen, that there is an unbalance. And in an unbalanced circumstance, I'll tell you what begin to happen. Amen. You'll get flip-flop, instability, unstable. Come on now. I'm going to get ready to start preaching to you. Amen. Because of instability. Amen. James said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. One minute you can't be on fire for the Holy Ghost, ready to lay your hands on somebody to heal them, and the next minute ready to quit, give up. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you can't be that way. Amen. I'm going to tell you something here tonight. You can't be in here one minute. Amen. Oh, shouting down. Amen. Let me tell you, all the Bobby pins come out. And the next service, amen, three days later, amen, say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Come on now. It's unstable. Oh, yes. You see, tonight for the enemy, the enemy, is the one that comes. And he comes with opposition. He comes with adversity and problems of things in our life. Amen. To get us in a place where we're not stable. Amen. This is what Solomon was talking about. Amen. Because he said it is vain for you to rise up early. To sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrow. What he's saying is is your problems. Amen. Uh, that's got you up all night. Uh, those problems uh, that's getting you up early in the morning uh, and it's affecting you all day long. Uh, he said it's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late uh, to eat the bread of sorrow. Uh, you know what sorrow is? Uh, sorrow is the suffering uh, of adversity or of loss uh, or a problem uh, that would bring you into a low, sad state. And see here tonight, amen, Solomon is telling, amen, in his song, amen, but honey, tonight, honey, what we need to do, amen, is to quit worrying about, amen, the things that is going on, to quit worrying about the problems, to quit worrying about the issues of life. And I tell you something here tonight, the whole duty of man is to fear the Lord and to keep his commandment. You want to know something tonight? The Bible said to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. Then all these things, what you're worried about ain't worth worrying over. Because God's going to take care of it if you'll trust him. Amen. See tonight, amen. A lot of people have a lot of problems because they allow the enemy to bring the problems in. Amen. I don't remember what service it was, but a service or two ago I was talking about, amen, how the devil comes to me with problems. Amen, just like this. He'll come to me with this problem, but guess what I do with it? I say, no, here, Jesus. And then another problem comes, and I say, nope, here, Jesus. See, honey, tonight, amen, we are to give, amen, heal him the burden. He is the one, amen, that is to pack the burden. That's what he came for, amen, was to lift our burdens, amen, because he said, my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. Oh, come on now tonight, we need to come to the Lord and give it to Jesus and say, Lord, I can't do it, but I give it to you and I trust that you are going to see me through. Let's see tonight. What I want to talk to you about tonight is worry. You know, some people, they'll sit and worry if I'm going to make it or not. 
If I worried that much over my salvation, I think I'd pray a little harder. Amen. I think I'd get a little closer to Jesus. Man, I'm not worried about if I'm going to make it or not. You know what I'm worried about? Is that my wife and my child going to make it. You know what I'm worried about? Uh, amen. I'm worried about uh, if my family is going to make it. Uh, you know what I'm worried about? It ain't about the bills. It ain't about the heartaches and the problems. Uh, it ain't about, uh, amen, what the enemy uh, arises in my life. Uh, but it's worried about, uh, amen, uh, the those around me. Uh, amen. That they may know Jesus uh, and his fullness. Uh, you know what my worry is? Uh, amen. The Lord, uh, I can do more for you. Uh, you know what my worry is? Uh, the Lord, uh, help me get closer to you. Help me to grow stronger in you. My worry is that I don't do enough for the Lord. Amen. In a way, amen, that I wouldn't be pleasing to him. But I tell you tonight, we need to quit letting the worries of the world affect us. We'll sit up all night worrying about how this is going to happen and what's going to go on when we can sit up all night praising the Lord. When we can sit up all night, amen, seeking the Lord. When we can sit up all night studying about the Lord and studying His Word, but yet we'll sit and we'll wrestle with the devil all night long. When it's not our job to fight. Come on now. Amen, it ain't your battle to fight the devil. The, the battle was already won at the cross. All you got to do is give the battle to Jesus. Let Him fight for you. Get me what's Exodus 14, 14 say? The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. What does it say now? The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So you shall hold your peace and the Lord shall fight for you. You see here tonight, amen, too many of us, amen, we're not keeping, I'm not talking about shutting your mouth, amen, you Freedom from disturbance is peace. We let that devil disturb you with the problems that's going on. We let the devil in your mind. We let the devil in your home, in your finances, and in your marriage. And just let Jesus fight the battle for you. Amen. Come on now. Even though some of you do need to hush. Amen. But that ain't what he's talking about. Amen. Woo! Come on now. Some of you got a tongue that'll wrap around the sanctuary three times and still slap yourself on the side of the head. Come on now. Come on now. See you here tonight. Amen. Nobody needs that devil's radio of gossip. Amen. But praise the Lord tonight. You know what we need? Amen. We need to get serious. Amen. And down to business with the Lord and quit worrying about how I'm going to do this. Quit worrying about how this is going to happen. Quit worrying about what's going to happen here. What's going to happen now. Amen. Let me ask you a question. If you died tonight, would it matter? Come on now. You know the only thing that mattered tonight if you died? is your soul. Quit worrying about mommy and daddy and brother and sister. Give them to Jesus. Come on now. See here tonight. Amen. You know what I do. Amen. You know how I worry about them. I, I get down and I say, Lord, uh, there's nothing I can do to save their soul. But God, uh, I know uh, that your Holy Ghost uh, is able to reach down uh, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're going through, uh, and is able uh, to prick the very hardest of heart, is able to destroy that stony heart and give a heart of flesh. Come on now. Some people they'll sit and worry, oh mommy, 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 daddy, daddy, oh my, my husband. Quit worrying about it. Give them to Jesus. Amen. Pray for them. Amen. For it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. Amen. Now I could stop. I heard some of us be in a lot of trouble, but that ain't what he's saying. <laughs> some of us is night owls and some of us is early birds. That ain't what he's talking about. But what he's talking about, uh, amen, is to get up early and to stay up late, uh, amen, uh, and eating the bread of sorrow, uh, to sit there, amen, you know the Lord don't want you to be sad. You know the Lord don't want you to sit there in a pity party. The Lord don't want you to lay there and to soak in your problems. That's why he said, honey, uh, to cast all your care upon him, uh, for he cares for you. That's why he said to come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Uh, that's why, amen, uh, he is the burden bearer. Amen. And tonight, amen, we need to quit worrying. 
I've had so many people that, amen, worry over this and worry over that. Worry boards. Come on now. They'll worry over every little thing. Oh, come on now. They'll worry, 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 worry. And it robs them. You know what worry does? Worry steals your joy. Worry, honey, robs you of your peace and your happiness. Honey, worry. Honey, can I, can I tell you something? Amen. Is a fiery dart of the devil that gets past the shield of faith because we let it. But tonight, if you use that shield and you'll block that fiery dart, when he comes saying, what's your wife going to do? What's he telling her? When he says, oh, no, what are you going to do about the bill? What are you going to do about the cancer? What are you going to do about the trouble? All you got to do is say, I know my Redeemer lives. And I know, amen, the God of Israel. Amen, the God that is faithful. The God that is true. The God that supplies every need. The God that healeth thee. The God, amen, tonight. Amen, that watch over his children. And tonight, if you only knew how big a God you said, you wouldn't worry anymore. Come on now. Let's see here tonight. Amen. And I know if you're in chat back, Meshach, I've been so many times, you're sick of it. I don't know about you, but I am just about it. Amen. It's all you ever hear from half hearted hypocrite preachers is Shadrach, back, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on now, because they don't study anything else. But I'm going to tell you about Shadrach, back, Meshach, and Abednego just for a second. They wasn't worried about Nebuchadnezzar. Come on now. They wasn't worried about a fiery furnace. Come on now. You know what they was worried about? Pleasing God. Come on now. Oh King. Amen. We will not be slow to answer you. But whether our God delivers or not. Come on now. See here tonight. Job said though he slayed me. Yet will I trust him. Honey tonight. Job said man born of a woman. Is a few days. And and I want you to know, honey, the Bible said he sent the sun to rise on the good and to set on the evil. And he sent his rain upon the just and upon the unjust. Honey, tonight, I want you to know that problems are going to come and they're going to go. But you need to believe and hold to Jesus. I see tonight. I really felt the Holy Ghost the description that their son tonight that you're losing sleep worrying about problems come on now you're losing sleep worried about issues amen that are going on in life come on now do you know tonight that he giveth his beloved sleep Amen. God don't want you to get two hours sleep because you was up all night fighting worrying about something. Come on now. Come on now. God don't want you, amen, in a place in life, amen, to where, amen, that you can't have rest. That's the reason why God created the Sabbath, amen, that we can have rest. See, tonight, he giveth his beloved sleep. He wants us to rest from our labor and from our works. He wants us, amen, you know what that word rest means? It means renewed. It means restored. It means revived. That word rest, amen, actually means, amen, to get, amen, another a portion to go on. You see, tonight, amen, you can't expect somebody to stay up and go and go and go and go and go. We're not energizer bunnies. See, but we got to have rest. Come on now. And the devil's fighting and some of you ain't getting no rest. You want to know why? Because you're not giving it to Jesus. Come on now. Hey, some of you are fighting and wrestling with things. Amen. And, and going on with things that's, amen, that, that listen, you'll make a mountain out of a molehill. Come on now. I've seen, amen, people, amen, worry and go on and tussle with the devil's soul, amen, that it ain't even nothing. Come on now to even worry about. That is so small on the scale of God that God, and I tell you something, 
is able to make an earthquake come and open every prison door. Come on now. And to bring the captain of the guard in. Amen. And save his soul and his house all through a prayer. Come on now. And we sit here and we'll, we'll get up early in the morning and try to figure out how we're going to do this to fix the situation or to do something, amen, to get things under control or to help our situation instead of giving it to God. Come on now. I know some of us got to get up early and work. I pity, the, amen, the people that do. Amen. Because I hate getting up early. But praise God. Amen. Tonight, I want you to know something. Amen. Quit staying up all night worrying about problems that ain't going to matter in the morning. That ain't going to matter next week. Ain't going to matter next year. But what's going to matter is that your soul is right with Jesus. You want to know why? Because if your soul's right with the Lord, your heart's right with Jesus. All things work together for good. And I tell you, if you're seeking the Lord, amen, you ain't got to worry about none of these issues because the Lord will take care of you. Because see, tonight, amen, I really believe that there is a worried spirit, amen, that is tormenting, amen, in this house tonight. I believe that there is a spirit, amen, that is causing, amen, I need to stay up late and get up early and to, to tussle and wrestle in the mind about issues that they need to let go of and give to the Lord. And I tell you something, amen, that spirit of torment that comes against your mind tonight is nothing but a spirit. Amen. Come on now. That all you've got to do is plead the blood and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Hey, and it has to go. Come on now. I've heard somebody say, well, I did that, but then it came right back. Do it again. Amen. Come on now. Do it again. And do it all night if you have to. Amen. The way you can get some sleep. But see here tonight. Amen. It is vain to rise up early in the morning and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow. Quit sucking in sorrow, worrying about things you've got no control over. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you tonight. Amen. I've had some people lay up and worry about my children, my children, my children, my children. If God can't take care of your children, nobody else can. Come on now. If God can't take care of your husband or wife, nobody else can. If God can't take care of the bills, woo, come on now. Nobody else can. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Come on now. And the earth and the fullness thereof. You think that little three hundred dollar record builds anything to God? Come on now. When we sit, we sit into a place saying, "What am I going to do? How is this going to happen?" Worry, worry, worry. But tonight, I hear the Lord saying, "Give it to me." Saying, "Give it to me. Give it to me." You see the problem? Yes, tonight. Is when things happen, the first thing we do is we try to fix it ourselves. Come on now. This is Adam nature. Notice, amen, when it comes down to it and there's a problem in your life, it's always got to be you that got to get your fingers in there and try to fix it first. Come on now. Why do you think that, amen, men car tires up, they got to get out there and they got to plunder in it and tire it up worse when they don't know what they're doing. Come on now. Come on now. I've heard some say, well, you got to learn. Yeah, but if you don't know, it's best let a mechanic do it. Come on now. Come on now. It's like plumbing. I've seen some. There's some people can do it. Some people can't. But see, the problem is, if you can't fix it, quit worrying about it and give it to Jesus. But see, that's the issue tonight. Amen. Is because the sorrow, whatever the disturbance is, whatever the issue is, whatever it is that is bringing you down tonight, the enemy is using it. Notice, some of you, it feels like an ever, never ending cycle of a rain that he'll get better 
And then it'll get worse. And then it'll get better. And then it'll get worse. But then it'll get better. But then it'll get worse. You want to know why that cycle is? Amen. It's because you're fully not giving it to the Lord. Come on now, you want to know what that cycle is? It's because when it starts getting back worse, you allow it to come and stay and do nothing about it. You allow it to reside. That's when people, they deal with, amen, anxiety and they deal with depression. And I know that it's real and I know that it's hard and I know that it's trouble. But I'm going to tell you, it's a spirit and all you got to do is rebuke it. But see, here tonight, I know that God can deliver from a needle. He can deliver from anything. If God can deliver from an alcohol, He can deliver from anything. If He can deliver, amen, honey, tonight, the sin that was struck on me, the stench that I was in, He can deliver from anything. The prophet Jeremiah said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord to so tonight, as we get ready to pray, and I really believe tonight, amen, that if you want to defeat this, if you want to get over this battle that is kept reoccurring, come on now, because, you know, when the devil comes back and he gets you one time, he's not going to stop. He's going to come back again. And he's going to come back again. The next time he comes, it's going to come even harder, even stronger, and even more worse than what he did in the beginning. But see, tonight, it's when you take a stand and you say, no, devil, I'm not worried about this no more. No, devil, I'm not letting this affect me anymore. But see, tonight, it's up to you and what you want to do. See, that word vain tonight means pointless. That word vain tonight means no profit, no good. Good for nothing. It's vain. It has no purpose. See, tonight there's no purpose getting up in the morning and staying up all night worrying about things that you have no control over. You see, here tonight, why would you worry about it anymore? Why would you let it consume you anymore? Why would you let the enemy have place? Tonight, because if he can get you to worry, he can get you to doubt. If he can get you to doubt, he can put in fear. You see, fear hath torment. You see, tonight, those that fear are not made perfect in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Tonight, my daughter come. And see tonight, a lot of times we'll sit and we'll wrestle with things in the middle of the night that nobody knows anything about. That nobody even knows. And we'll, we'll get up and while everybody else is in the bed, we'll sit and we'll wrestle. We'll cry and we'll go on. You see, I'm going to tell you a testimony. The Lord laid this on my heart day before yesterday and I was thinking there was one night me and my wife we was up all night long and we was worried and we was didn't know how we was going to do it and how we was going to get through didn't know how we was going to make it we was crying and we just just sit there on the couch all night long and I'm telling you just the enemy was having his way with us and we sit there, and my wife, she opened her phone up and got on Facebook, and there was a woman that we know. And she sung this song. And I'll never forget that morning. She was saying that song. It was just like I felt the Lord say, Child, don't worry about it anymore. Because I'm going to take control of it. I'm going to take care of it. The song starts as I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night. See, tonight, 
You might be in the middle of the night worrying about things and nobody else worries about crying and saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Or what, what should I do? How, how am I going to get through this? So you don't try to find counsel in yourself. Don't try to figure it out on your own. But see, it's when you bring it up to the Lord. And you say, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm going to do. But God, I'm going to trust you. I'm not worried about it no more. And I'll never forget after we listened to that song. There was a peace came over us. And when that peace came over, it was like nothing that I've ever felt before because it was a peace of God that passed all understanding. It was the peace of God that He said to let rule in your heart. Not the worries, not the burdens, not the cares of this life, but to let Him have place. And I sit and I begin to think about that how many times we lay and we work. How many times have we cry ourselves to sleep or we'll sit there and we'll get upset and get angry or get aggravated and learn our whole day over something that matters to nothing when we should just give it to the Lord and say, God, I don't know what else to do. My truck is torn up. My car is broke down. This is going on and that's going on. See, if you just quit worrying about it, I'll tell you something. I told the Lord, my truck tore up. This may seem simple to stop. But I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I tried every way to try to fix it on my own. I tried to get out there and I tried patching the frame up. It just broke again. The frame was bad. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, I've got to have a truck. I've got to be able to haul stuff. I've got to be able to do stuff for the church. I've got to have it to bring the lawnmower and mow the grass. I've got to be able to have it. What if we get stuff donated to the church? I've got to have it to bring this stuff to help the people out. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And when the frame, frame broke on I really, when it worried me to death, see tonight, the enemy knows how to get to you and try to bring work into your heart. in my life. Amen. But when it comes to my sheep and it comes to the Lord's house and it comes, amen, the family, God knows, amen, that that's what means most to me. And so I said, don't worry. You've got to kill me. I said, I know what I'll do. I'll talk to Brother Curtis. I'll give me a new truck. He'll let me pay payments on whatever I can afford. I got down and I started praying that night. After I talked to Curtis, Curtis said, whatever you want, whatever I've got, you can have it if you want it. Don't have to pay nothing down. And whatever you can afford, if it's just $100 a month. He said, I don't care. I'll help you any way I can. Some of us be like, oh yes, the Lord's blessing and he's opening the door. But see, this is where you've got to really start praying. And say, Lord, no, I give it to you. And whatever you think is best, what I'm going to do. And I prayed and I prayed and I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And the Lord said, Don't do nothing. Let me do it. It's like some of you, you don't need to do nothing. Let the Lord fix it. Let the Lord fix it. Let the Lord fix the issue.
me to simply eat the bread. 